Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 216 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Tuesday, September 26, 2023, and it is going to be a cloudy day here at the Beaver Lodge with just a little bit of sun for maybe about two or three hours this afternoon, but mostly cloudy today. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, good morning to the kits who are here this morning. Good morning, Kit Dan, Kit Tavi G, Kit Saucy, Kit Cassie. Hey, hey, hey. Hope the harvest is going well. Kit Jillian and Kit Elaine so far this morning. Glad that you've popped in to join us. Um... Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Oh, and there is a Kit Pete that was me. Uh, in from uh, Down Under, uh, popping up here at the North Pole. Hello, buddy. Lovely to see you. Um, They're going said, into summer. They're going into spring, and we're going into autumn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so we said thank you to our founding sponsors, I believe. But I'll yes, say it again, just in case, Pepper Master, Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. And, well, let's do the most important thing that we do is, uh, because we've been away for a while, an extra day, um, hello to you, Mr. Grizzly, and how's your mental health today? Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. Uh, mental health-wise, um, I, I, I'm not, <laughs> not entirely sure. I woke mm-hmm. up in a state of mass confusion when the alarm went off. I thought it was Saturday, and I thought, oh... I can go back to sleep. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have an alarm on Saturday. Why is my alarm going off? Oh, right. Yes, it is not Saturday. I do, it is a working day. What day is it? I don't know what day it is. I woke up feeling stressed because uh, I had uh, bizarre dreams. So bizarre that I, I, I was, let's just say there was a heavy workout involved in the dream. So I was flexed and stressed and and. I think that's why I'm able to stay so lean. <laughs> I work out it's in all my worry. dreams. <laughs> well, I work out in my dreams and I wake up. Arr! I don't know. It's, it's weird. But yeah, I, th- I think I'm okay today. Um, let me get some more coffee into me and I'll, and I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a, 
a later i don't know a clue later I don't okay okay so welcome to the eager beaver lodge weight loss plan worry your weight away <laughs> i do not recommend that anxiety is a horrible horrible thing and i brought yeah, my pencil <laughs> give me something to write on man <laughs> hey i'm just saying waldo was really sweating he was dropping some pounds oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i noticed a comment from cassie she says uh, i can't believe it's fall already waking up in the dark is difficult yeah it can't get yeah i'm slim. i get i wake up at five uh some days i get out of bed right around then most days I just, I lie there for another hour to wake up and read and six o'clock I roll out of bed and it's still dark out and that that's difficult. Now <clears throat> in, in November, we'll change the clock. So it's like, yay, we get more daylight hours in the morning. Yeah. But not long enough because I still walk to work in the dark. So, <laughs> and sometimes I walk home from work in the dark. Yeah. So yeah. this is the yeah. difficult time. Yeah. We had Kit Cassie going harvest done and grain in the bins. Thank you for asking Mr. Beaver. And uh, Cassie says, uh, do we have to solve the equations behind Mr. Beaver? Um, again, if people turn the volume off and we have very, very serious faces with you, with the bookcase and me, the math behind me, it looks like we were like a very, very serious, almost every now and then I'll just point right, and do this. Yeah. I'll brush my beard here and hmm. no, <laughs> listen if you listen to us without the without the sound right now if you just watch yeah, us just watch, we, we, we watch look we look show, yeah. we look plenty smart <laughs> and and serious very 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 serious that's, that's <laughs> except for the literally greek. all greek to me <laughs> um no you do not have to solve the equations uh that's been me trying to make um the whole ukrainian is he a nazi not a nazi is he a little bit of nazi is it okay to use nuance maybe type debate that's been going on and uh, uh part of that also is trying to figure out the whole also whole history of indian punjab as yeah. well because <laughs> The 40 Except million the one, one at 40 million. are all experts and we were all brought to what modern day sort of acceptable narrative of the of this is because yes, I mean, in Canada, we, we all go to school learning about the history of India and stuff like the Holodomor which um well that's exactly it yesterday at one point i'm like trying to figure out this stuff going on because i mean unless you've been living under a rock kids and cubs um the apology heard around the world mm -hmm. literally <laughs> was delivered by the speaker of the house anthony rhoda because again depending which side you hear telling it and then yes. i'm there's way more than two sides in this case to the story. Oh yeah. Um, someone, Yaroslav. I don't know what happened. Oh, you, you dropped off there for a second. You just. Oh I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, I don't know what happened there either. Um, okay, so of course, so what happened is that the Speaker of the House, uh, when President Zelensky was here from Ukraine and addressing Parliament, uh, in the gallery, the Speaker has guests often and there was a guest 90 year 98 year old veteran of the war named yaroslav hunka was in the audience and the speaker of the house acknowledged him and got everybody to stand and give him a, an ovation then we found out that uh for part of the time of the war he fought with an ss unit mm -hmm. that sounds pretty bad mm-hmm but, and if that was just the story, it's like, well, gee, why do we have a 98-year-old former Nazi living in Canada who has citizenship and why was he invited and how did he get on the invite list and um, why are we, why did we applaud him and how could this be missed and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Well, again, you had a whole bunch of people rushing in with their hot take, just like in the case of India. And as, mm -hmm. as, and as we mentioned, right, you're going to get a lot of the Harper IDU Modi trolls coming in. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people control, you know, going, well, you know, 
it's like Quebec separatism. No, it really isn't like Quebec separatism. That's like, just tell me that you hunted on Google for Canada and separatist movements and put it together and then said, ah, so you've got one too. Because, no, um, I mean, I don't know much about India, but the little bit that we've picked up over the past couple of days and that, yes, there's a reason why Hindus may see it differently because there were things and there were deaths that happened in the Punjab. I guess. But um, we had one death with the FLQ thing. Mm -hmm. One. And then the Prime Minister came in and put on the War Measures Act and you know, now we have a country where you can have a crazy idea like being a separatist and not to be a terrorist. Right? So just as that that type of it's happening on both sides, right? Using the shortcuts. So mm -hmm. he fought with the SS. He's a very, very bad man. There we go. Well, and then he, some, I'm doing the math on this though, and it's like he, he he's 98, so that means he would have been born in 1925. So at the start of the war, he would have been uh, what 14, yeah, and 18 at the end of it. So I need I need some more I need some more facts here because yeah. I I don't know what to make of it. Yeah. Now, from I am far from an historian, right? But it seems from my understanding, and I very, very, very much could be wrong, so please read up on this yourselves, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this is just my best of understanding based on what's like crossed my feed, and I'm really not to try and, trying to take positions on that one yes or no. I'm trying to take positions on stupid stuff, like this, and we'll get to that. Um, but it seems that um, Ukraine was fighting for an independent Ukraine, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. I'm guessing against Russia, except at that, in here. yeah, exactly. Except at that time, uh, Russia, UK, and the United States in that war were the allies. Mm. So you got these tweets going. Listen, it's not hard. If you were fighting against Russia, you were with uh, maybe not that easy where Ukrainians are concerned. Well, maybe. and, and it seems that there's remember. a history there. At the beginning of the war, the Russians were in league with the Germans at the beginning, and then they switched, and later, they switched on later on when, when Hitler decided he wanted to take over Russia. But uh, I, I do not know enough about this to make a full... I've had a lot of people text me, email me, what's your, what's your thoughts, what's your thoughts? I haven't read enough on it to know, to form a thought. I don't want to rush out and make a statement until I know. I don't want to look like Skippy and say, wow, he was... If he was a true Nazi, an actual Nazi, then... Boom. Anthony Rhoda needs to resign. Well, but I think is there not a vetting process there before you bring in a guest? Well, here's the thing. There's we'll get to all of that. Uh, so but I'm, it seems I'm, you know, I still yeah, I'm yeah. still okay, I, I have some of that for you. Um so but it seems that, and again, not historian, so please check this up and hopefully if I'm wrong, people will correct me and you know as we go over this over the next few days because this will be a story in a while we'll probably get it more precise um is there was something called the holodomor it seems that where russia um provoked a famine in ukraine like by trying i guess blocking off borders or whatnot stopping food from getting i'm not exactly how sure so you have a situation where people in ukraine it seems where do you want to fight for Stalin or do you want to fight for Hitler? And the situation of maybe uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, no matter how unsavory my enemy is. There's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. I don't know what's true. But it's a little more complicated than he was fighting with an SS unit. I, it's a little more complicated. The way that they would like us to believe it is, is that this person, when he was, I guess, 14, 15, 16, just walked up to the Nazis and said, hey, exterminating Jews, that sounds like a great idea. Where do I sign up? Mm hmm uh, if you're in a country that's at war with another country who's also at war with other countries and the war country you're at war is trying to provoke a famine, is trying to starve you out, 
and you're fighting them and somebody else is fighting them and say, hey, since you're fighting them, let's fight together. And I believe that back in the day, if you weren't Aryan, you couldn't actually join the Nazi group. So your only other option was the SS. And let's remember that there was a lot of join the SS or we'll shoot you on the spots during that time as well. We don't know this man. What we do know is that back in the Mulroney area era, there was a public commission. Mm-hmm. There was a Deschain Dish, public Inqui- inquisition on uh, public inquisition public inqu- commission on this <laughs> public inquisition <laughs> public oh yeah mm-hmm. really gee there's a there's a inquisition, what a show the inquisition you gotta go don't you remember that from history of the world <laughs> <laughs> yes Mel Brooks oh man Mel Brooks um so apparently this was looked at then and the particular mm-hmm. unit with which this person was affiliated, it was not able to be determined Mm -hmm. that this unit was part of that effort specifically and dedicated to war crimes and dedicated. And as a result, there are several people in Canada over the years Mm -hmm. who have received Canadian citizenship from that unit. But only yeah, this know. weekend are we having a problem with it. It's funny how that happens. Eh? Now, now, look, there's no uh, splitting hairs on this. If it turns out the man was a real Nazi and that was the case, well, then Rhoda needs to step down. Oh, he uh, still needs to step apology. down. Oh, I agree. He does, period. Regardless, but, uh, but for a whole other reason. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. But the vetting process needs to be stepped up. Um, it, it, this does not look good no matter what. It's just, it's bad all the way around, but we still don't know all the, the details. So that's why I'm, I'm not quick to make a rush to judgment just yet. Cause it's, it's, it all, it's all very fishy to me. Like how could he get into the house of commons as a guest of the speaker of the house? If his past was as checkered as it supposedly is, because there is a vetting process. There is. So did they drop the ball on but, that? But well, we'll get to there. Um, now. There is a website that's called EuroMaidenPress.com. Uh, mm-hmm. So Euro, E-U-R-O, Maiden, M-A-I-D-A-N, Press.com. Now, um, this... D-A-N? Yes, M-A-I-D-A-N, EuroMaiden or EuroMaidan okay. Press. Now, yeah, if okay. you go to the About Us section, it says, EuroMaidan Press, EP, is an online English-language independent newspaper launched by Ukrainian volunteers in 2014. EP focuses on events concerning Ukraine and provides translations of Ukrainian news, expert analyses, and independent research. Through its work, EP strives to bridge Ukraine with the English-speaking word. EP is a registered non-governmental organization in Ukraine. NGO Euromaidan Press, its current head of the board, is Alia Chandra. All right? It has an article. Fact check. Did the Canadian Parliament really invite a Nazi? This is Ukrainian press from Ukraine, (laughs) about a Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. I hope they would know. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Anthony Rhoda, Speaker for the House of Commons of Canada, apologized for praising the 98-year-old Ukrainian World War II veteran Yaroslav Hunka after Canadian Jewish groups alleged a connection to the Holocaust. However, quote, these accusations lack merit and align with Putin's agenda of labeling Ukrainians as Nazis. This is this is where it's all fishy, right? The, the, I've I've read a lot of commentary from people that I, I'm asking if this was a setup, if somebody set them up to fall. If yeah. again, I will get to that. <laughs> so I know, but it's just I don't want to go down the conspiracy no, no. theory rabbit but, hole. Is what I'm. But there, are, at. without going down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole, there are questions that you must ask. You know, when you turn around, you go, um, mm-hmm. I've got questions. This is the time to have questions. So, oh, yes. Um, so this, that's what I know the most about the, about the situation, right? There may have been shifting loyalties. There may have been coercion. There may have been uh, choices between two devils and which one do you pick and did you really have a choice, especially if you're starving or someone has a gun to your head. Um, 
and you have a Ukrainian press group within Ukraine that's a registered charity that is saying that these allegations are not not are without merit that actual Ukrainians recognize this guy as a Ukrainian hero. Mm. Now again, that's just this one organization. I don't know if this organization has the general narrative or speaking from a perspective. It's the best I've been able to find. Now we get to some of the stupid stuff. Rhoda uh, issued a statement. Mm -hmm. And the statement said, On Friday, September 22nd, in my remarks following the address of the President of Ukraine, I recognized an individual in the gallery. I have subsequently become aware of more information which causes me to regret my decision to do so. I wish to make clear that no one, including fellow parliamentarians and the Ukraine delegation, was aware of my intention or of my remarks before I delivered them. This initiative was entirely my own. The individual in question being from my writing and having been brought to my attention. I particularly want to extend my deepest apologies to Jewish communities in Canada and around the world. I accept full responsibility for my actions. Now here's where I'm going to say where Rhoda should resign, even though maybe he shouldn't have to, if the guy is not a Nazi. But the thing is, is if you write a statement saying, I did something, I've sus subsequently been aware of more information, quote unquote, and more information is, the guy's a Nazi. Let's assume he is for the purposes of this. Mm -hmm. And then you accept full responsibility for your actions for having invited who you think is an actual Nazi. As was the case for Doug Ford, as was the case for Steve Clark, as was the case for the head of Hockey Canada. Mm -hmm. If you say, I accept full responsibility, and simply saying, I accept full responsibility, is your consequence, you have not accepted full responsibility. And Speaker Rhoda, if you are accepting full responsibility for having invited who you say now, if not is a Nazi, is highly suspected of being a Nazi. And you're going to take that position now that yes, maybe he is and that you do have something to apologize for rather than wait and see what the story is. Maybe it's more nuanced. And you're accepting full responsibility for having brought a Nazi. Full responsibility for having brought a Nazi into the House of Commons when the president of Ukraine, who's fighting literal people who are behaving pretty much like Nazis, if not mm -hmm. Nazis, is probably something that requires more than, oops, it was my bad, I accept full responsibility. You do have to resign if you believe that you've invited a Nazi in. Now, if you don't believe you invited a Nazi yep. in, and what you're doing is something that a government might be doing here, because there's a lot of people that are upset that the government has decided, oh my God, he's a Nazi, yeah, let's renounce him, when that really hasn't yet been established. But all this stuff that I've just said right now to bring you to the point of maybe is he really a Nazi? You know, and you got people on the other side go, oh, saying, well, he was just a little bit a Nazi. Wow, that's a weird flex. He might not have been a Nazi at all. And he was just given a whole bunch of bad choices and he chose to live. All right. And had to do unspeakable mm. things in that capacity. We do not know. I certainly do not know. But I'm going to open the door to the possibility that it may be just a little more complicated than, aha, Nazi, we got you. You've been living in this country for 70 years because that would raise a whole other set of questions mm -hmm. <laughs> from past governments because there's more than just him. Yeah, but so, he's been here for 70 years. I'm like, uh, and, and the whole uh, unit was investigated during that commission and deemed to not have committed war crimes. So we probably, mm -hmm. and Canada has the largest Ukrainian diaspora outside of Ukraine. So what, there, there could be up to 700 mm -hmm. yeah, people that we've let in. Small. Now they're probably not all alive now because this guy's 98, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they lived here all these years and there was never an issue until now. Look, it, it, the whole thing stinks to high heaven. It's bad optics. Okay. Um, it makes everybody look horrible. Okay. I don't know because I have not done enough reading on it. I'm pleading really ignorance. To form an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the whole thing yesterday. Is like, I'm not going to have an opinion. But what I did have an opinion on mm -hmm. is, for example, should Rhoda resign? Well, yes, of course, because he says I let a Nazi in. 
I accept full yeah, responsibility so. for that. Well, then you show, show. show us. You've got to be consistent with your words. That's the reason for which he needs to do it. But in that letter, right, that uh, one, two, three, fourth paragraph, this initiative was entirely my own. The individual in question being from my writing mm -hmm. and having been brought to my attention. Mm -hmm. By whom? Yes. Now, if you're wondering about how did he get there, that's the question. That's what we say in French, la question qui tue, the question that kills. Who brought this person to the, your attention? Who slipped this person onto your path so that you can say, oh my God, he did this in the World War II? Well, yeah, let's have him in. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody's presented to you as being a war hero. Like this, you think, oh my God, I have an opportunity to do this. How much vetting are you going to do? I mean, why would somebody present someone to you as being a war hero from Ukraine if they're not? So a lot of people are wondering if this person was brought to Mr. Rota's attention by a conservative, for example. I've, I've read that. that we, we do, not know, we we do know. not know, and he is not saying. Right. But who brought it to his attention kind of matters. Um, but the man does live in his writing. Then you have this whole other session where Pierre Polliver and the conservatives were saying that the prime minister personally met with Mr. Hunka either before or after the ceremony. Mm -hmm. That never happened. Oh, no. no. I, I've, PM, I've read conflicting... Uh, the prime minister's office has issued statements that never happened. Mm -hmm. There was no individual meeting. Now, here's the thing. If you do believe that the Speaker of the House did invite a Nazi, an actual Nazi, into the House of Commons when President Volodymyr Zelensky is there delivering an address fighting against people who are trying to label him as being a Nazi, a and people man. who are actually being Nazi, acting like Nazis, you got all of that going on, Mm. that's bad enough on its own, oh, right? Yeah. The why lie when mm -hmm. the truth will do, that's bad mm -hmm. enough on its own. But you had to add the embellishment that the prime minister met with him. Mm -hmm. And then you're starting to ask about security and you're going like this, well, everybody that gets close to the prime minister must be vetted. Blah, blah, blah. There's political security, mm -hmm. political vetting, and physical vetting. Mm -hmm. When Karina Gould, the deputy prime, well, not the deputy prime minister, sorry, the house leader, right. stood up in the house to answer questions because the prime minister was not there and Pierre Polaro kept on asking questions of the prime minister, even though he was not there in the room because it looks good on the clippings because the House of Commons only shows you. Mm -hmm. um, she said that everybody had been vetted to be in the house. Everybody got security vetted to be in the house, mm -hmm. to be in the gallery, like everybody does when they go to the House of Commons and want to sit in the gallery. If you're sitting in the gallery, you are not considered being to close proximity to the prime minister. If I go to the House of Commons to go sit in the gallery to watch question period, I do not need to have a security check or be vetted in terms of my past. They just check my pockets, make sure I'm not bringing sharp objects or explosives. Mm -hmm. And they watch me like a hawk to make sure I'm not going to be disruptive during the house. Well, otherwise, they immediately pull me out. Mm -hmm. Which is why I wouldn't. He was vetted security-wise. Not his background. The speaker, yes, the speaker of the house invites his own guests. It has nothing to do with the prime minister. For the same way that the same reason that the um, decisions of the governor general also have nothing to do with the prime minister which is one of the reasons, for example, we mentioned on a previous show, well, why doesn't the prime minister just keep on living on the governor general's grounds? Because even though it's just symbolic, it's probably not good optics for mm -hmm. the prime minister, the democratically elected prime minister, to be living on the same grounds as the non-democratically elected head of state. Yes. In order. So similarly, it is probably not a good idea for the Speaker of the House, who must be independent and impartial to all the members of the House, to vet his guests through the Prime Minister's office. 
that would be quite a violation of parliamentary privilege to give the sitting government of Canada of the day a veto on who the speaker who serves the entire house and is impartial to everyone. Then they keep on saying, oh, why is he still in caucus? The Speaker of the House is not in caucus. Oh, well, then they show us election signs saying he's running for the rural party. Yes, he got elected to Parliament as a member of the caucus. But the entire Parliament votes on Speaker, so people put their candidates up, and the people, the candidates that are up, agree to the fact that if they are elected Speaker, they are no longer a member of the party's caucus because, again, impartiality which mm -hmm. is probably one of the reasons why in Canada the Speaker also has his own residence. It makes that look that much more official that they are a part. Mm -hmm. So just a little civic. So you got the Conservatives that have a story that's juicy on its own, who had to add to it the lies that the Prime Minister met with, met with him. Right? And had to add all these additional little tiny lies there. Well, if you have to lie to sell an already juicy story, you've got stuck. nothing there. And all it does is turn the attention on you. And all these hypocritical conservatives right now who are just, oh my God, the Jewish people, Jewish people suddenly got this instance case of Harponesia because just a few months ago, and Leslie Lewis herself has got mm -hmm. some tweets out there doing it, having Nazi brunch. The lady who literally lunches with actual Nazis from actual Germany just months ago has thoughts about inviting Nazis to an event. Well, so I'm reading Skippy's uh, tweet here yesterday from yesterday uh, at 4.44 p.m. And it says, um, it has come out today that Justin Trudeau personally met with an honored veteran of the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS, a Nazi division. Happen. It didn't happen. So number one, lie. Liberals then arranged for this Nazi veteran to be recognized on the floor of the House of Commons during the visit of the Ukrainian lie. president. Lie. That's a lie. That was that Speaker of the House. This is an appalling error in judgment on the part of Justin Trudeau, whose personal protocol office is responsible for arranging and vetting all guests and programming for state visits of this kind. Yes, but not <laughs> what the Speaker is going to do if the person's been... <laughs> the... Z that's Zelensky's visit, the protocol yes. and stuff. Yes. Then he goes on to say... Who gets to sit in no. the gallery of the House of Commons if the person gets the privilege of addressing the House is not part of that. Exactly. But they're conflating all this stuff, and these are people who know because, again, Pierre Polliver has been, was a member of the government for 10 years. Yeah. He knows how that damn PMO works. Oh, yeah, and so of course does, does Jenny Byrne. But they'll twist it to suit their narrative. Now, here's the, his, what he goes on to say. No parliamentarians other than Justin Trudeau, had the opportunity to vet this individual's past before he was introduced and honored in the floor of the House of Commons without warning or context. It was impossible for any parliamentarian in the room other than Mr. Trudeau to know of this dark past. Now, hang on a second now. Hang on a second now. You can't say, I didn't read the T-shirt when you had a photograph of a guy who had a lime green T-shirt that was saying something sexist and then make a statement like that. Well, I didn't read the T-shirt. You really think for one fucking second the prime minister of any nation on earth vets every visitor that he personally receives. That's a load of shit. And you fucking know it. You lying piece of garbage. Look, if this guy's a Nazi, fuck him, but fuck Pierre Polyev for being a raging fucking cock on this. Oh, I'm oh. mad. So, so the prime minister vets every person who sits in the gallery, exactly. like the leader of the party vets every person he takes a picture with. It Tit for tat, motherfucker. I am mad this morning because this rage farming cock is the one dividing our nation. And he gets away with it. He lied several times in one tweet, and that was uh, retweeted 7,000, almost 9,000 times. Whereas Karina Gould's tweet, uh, the speaker has made it clear that he was responsible for inviting this in individual of the house the government played no role it, i it did not know he would be there the pm did not meet him i deeply troubled this happened i urge mps to avoid politicizing this incident 238 retweets yep so come on i'm going to share this tweet in the chat if anybody wants to uh to retweet it because 
this lying prick. Yeah, if Kit's a PNC bio goes, surely the vetting should have been different when Zelensky comes. Maybe it wasn't, but it seems negligent. May well be the case, though. No, the, the, the vetting was the exact same vetting that Zelensky had when he came last time. That worked mm -hmm. without a hitch. The same vetting that the leader of Japan had when he came, the same leader as the leader of Germany had when he came. It's the same vetting. It's like we're, we're not new at this. We've been having diplomats over for over 150 years. We kind of got mm -hmm. it down. It's not the vetting that was the problem. You've got the conservatives that are conflating security vetting with entering the House of Commons with political vetting. And the political vetting applies to Mr. Zelensky. Not to everybody that's going to be on his path unless there's an actual, like, going to be a face-to-face -face meeting. But if there's going to be a dinner party and a reception line, yeah, everybody at that dinner party is definitely checked because you're in a room. But the gallery of the House of Commons, that's just public. I could have been there on that day. Any one of us could have been there. If you got there early enough and there was a seat, you were in there. There's no vetting for us, the people in the gallery, other than what's in your pockets. What's in your bag? Mm -hmm. Pass through this metal detector, please. So, And again, the conservatives know this, and they're mixing. They're mixing both. They're saying, ah, you said he was vetted, but he wasn't because you would have known that. He was, he was vetted for metal objects and explosives going through a security thing. Not for his past. Not for his past. Uh, and let's 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 address this elephant in the room. If if, if elephant, in the room, I don't even know what to the label. I'm going to throw something on the screen here. Leave it up for a few seconds before I read it because this is something that is happened. It took place. We witnessed it, and it seems to have. Have, uh, we we're still we sharp on this, and the mainstream media let it go. But let's let's just put this little tweet thread on the screen here. Ben Ryan at mm. Ambionics underscore UK replying to Anderson AFD MP, MDEP. You're my favorite Nazi racist homophobe transphobe Islamophobe. Christine Anderson's reply: Thanks, and I do plead <laughs> guilty to all of the above. You are a breath of fresh air. I wish you were the UK Prime Minister or Canadian Prime Minister. So, um, Skippy still... <sighs> deep mm. breaths. Deep breaths. Deep, breaths. deep cleansing breaths. Deep cleansing breaths. Uh, how much time do we have, Mr. Grizzly? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. All right. Uh, okay, let's do the Tasha thing that I wanted to do the other day then. Um, Kits, um, we have been talking and a lot about Tasha Carradine uh, over the past uh, few weeks and months, uh, not first coming to our attention because we, we knew of her clearly before. But um, when she wrote a piece... Um, suggesting that the Supreme Court of Canada had been incredibly politicized by our Prime Minister and begging him not to politicize it anymore after um, Justice Brown had to step down uh, based on what happened uh, when he was on vacation, mm -hmm. let's say. Um and then um, this Tasha Carradine person uh, who was working for the Patrick Brown campaign during the leadership, so doesn't support Polyev, um, and seemed to be, um, well, no, no, sorry, she was with Charest. Sorry, not with Patrick Brown, with Charest, I believe. Um, and then uh, they announced something called Center Ice Canadians, which was another political movement. Uh, and uh, on the 20th, well, they announced that, yes, they are, going forward as a party, Alberta businessman Rick Peterson, who once uh, campaigned for the leadership of the Conservative Party as well, uh, another rich guy, 
trying to get into politics and I guess creating their own movement. Uh, but this one seems to have the support of a certain number of moderates. Um, however, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's I don't know, it's complex. I don't know where it is that they're really going to sit sit on the spectrum because what they've been saying the entire mm -hmm. time is that they want to be like the old progressive conservatives. But if you're adopting the GOP playbook of the prime minister's politicizing the court, and now she has uh, started to get uh, a yeah. little bit uh, friendly uh, with the um, uh, hands off our kids movement. Is she a Pino? And, progressive in name only? It, I'm thinking that she, they might have decided that their bread is a little more buttered on that side, financial wise. Uh, but well, she put, wage farming does get you money. Yeah. Well, she wrote for the National Post again, who seemed to love publishing this stuff, an editorial call called School Quote Inclusion Excludes Parents. No wonder they marched. And she goes into a whole bunch of things that I could read here to it. Um, I'll just probably post a link so that uh, the kids can check that out themselves. But it's just <sighs> school inclusion excludes parents. You know, that whole thing that we talked about, the parallel of the, the, the paradox of tolerance. Well, that's what's going on here, right? We must include people who wish to persecute some of the most vulnerable children that we have in society or else tisk 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 terrible mm -hmm. terrible terrible bad us we are exclusionary and i thought okay one bullshit argument school exclusion also excludes parents just a different set of them School inclusion can't also include those who wish to self-segregate. These people can find out what's going on in class and in their schoolrooms. They can ask their kids. They can ask to see the curriculum. They can ask to speak to the school board, a teacher, why not find out. If you decide that you, as part of society, are going to self-segregate from the rest of the society and then are upset that there's no place for you in a society from which you've segregated yourself. You are not being excluded. Two, why is Tasha working so hard to throw this red meat to the fringe? I thought she was center ice. Not so much, eh? That's, and here she, yeah. she's practicing the art of what I call nice, nasty politics. Mm -hmm. Because in her previous tweet, remember, time spent on ideology instead of learning is driving parents nuts and is fueling a backlash that will get very ugly very fast if politicians and educators don't pay attention. Frowny face. So she couches mm -hmm. her anti-trans tweets as concern for kids. Right? The sad face emotion is how you're supposed to know that she's sincere for the kids. That's the nice part. Right? But then the nasty part, she's intentionally framing... The reality in today's classrooms is time spent on ideology instead of learning. Well, if you're doing that, then you're not caring about the kids now. You're caring about those for whose benefit you are claiming that what's going on in the classroom is ideology instead of learning. When all that's going on is learning that it's a big world well, and that there are people that are different and you're going to meet them and you should be nice to people who are different, like you're nice to people who are the same. Like Elaine has here that I put on the screen, they can view the curriculum online. I don't think any of them have done that. No, 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 no. Well, let alone have any of them actually spoken to students. We we had one on just well yesterday morning. You saw the show. We taped it on Sunday. Yep, and the response to it has she been very told good. Us. Oh yeah, it was one of the one of the highest view moment, right? already. One of the most view showed of the of the last two weeks. Yes, yeah, such a remarkable young woman. Yeah. So Tasha doesn't want the backlash or the consequence of being called out for saying ideology, so she claims to worry about a backlash that will get very ugly while she's feeding that backlash. Because the brave thing, the stand up for Canada thing, remember when, her, when the conservatives used to run on stand up for Canada, is mm -hmm. for the rest of us to make ourselves really, really, really small and really docile and really as quiet as possible because we must live in fear of the backlash. 
of a minority of irrational loudmouths who mm. would deliver the backlash regardless. Because feeling that they are the victims of the system gives them that sense of belonging to a group that they have not had. And everybody in that group tells them that they're the ones that are right, everybody else is wrong, and stick with us, we'll love you. Pretty much like gangs or cults. Right? Well, to that, Miss Carradine, I say, and pardon my language, Miss Grizzly's mom, but fuck no. Mm -hmm. I refuse to make myself smaller and to silence myself so some overprivileged, allegedly heterosexual conservative can dictate to me how I'm supposed to feel about people wanting to trample all over the most vulnerable members of my community. And she goes, no one's trampling. No one is saying you can't be trans or straight or whatever you choose, but schools are for education. Kids are not learning basic skills and violence is off the charts. Those are the priority schools should focus on. Curriculum should also be age appropriate. If this isn't a big ask, nor is it hateful. Which is just more BS because she says nobody's trampling. Um, you got the premier of Scott Moe that wants to unleash the notwithstanding clause on a group of kids. So, Miss Carradine, please, again, respect me enough to not pop a squat right over my leg as you urinate and tell me it's rain. This, this thing I just put on screen from Tim, uh, I felt the same way. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching that film. That I know which one you're talking about. I was watching it in school, and I'm like, I was 17, I think, 16 or 17 when I saw it. Oh, Romeo and Juliet, nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah, right. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I, I remember watching that. that in school. We had to. We were. We were. It was part of the curriculum to watch the film. And I'm like, huh? How are those parents going to feel about? Well, that's that's uh, historically accurate by uh, by uh, William Shakespeare and blah blah. I'm like, but historically accurate. It was a play. It didn't actually take place. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. real. I know. I know. Number one and number two, it's part of English class, not history class. And number three, yeah, there is a nude scene in there. Yep. It, it happened. I saw it. Yeah. So you have Scott Moe saying he's going to use the notwithstanding clause. Yeah. She says no one's trampling. So when a premier throws the full weight of the state behind an effort to appropriate information from a vulnerable child, no less, information yes, that does not belong to the state or the premier, and claims that information as their own to do with what they will, if you don't call that trampling, I don't know what it is. Because if the state did the same, and we mentioned this before, with information about pregnancies, filing for marriage license, marital infidelity, or a married person going, to, going for an STD test, you'd be up in arms. Mm -hmm. Because... But because it's personal information belonging to a child, suddenly you you don't care. She goes, no one is saying you can't be trans or straight or whatever you choose, really, because it seems to me that what they're saying is, quote, you can be whatever you choose. Parentheses, by the way, it's not whatever you choose, it's whatever you are. Mm -hmm. You can be whatever you are. But if you're the wrong thing, we're going to make your life hell. Don't want us to tell your parents? Why not come into this room in which we'll throw yet more adults, like a social worker or psychologist, your way to pressure you even more into disclosing something you don't want to disclose? Oh, yes, you can be whatever you choose. You just can't be it safely. So if you want to be safe, maybe it's best you don't be your full, true, authentic self here because we won't protect you. Hmm. But schools are for education, she says, and your starting bias is that children learning about the world around them and that different people make up that world and that that's okay is not education. But I digressed from the not trampling. I, <laughs> I, I, I digressed with not trampling like this. And then, so back to the her original thing. Seriously, screw you, Tasha, for not only suggesting mm -hmm. even obliquely that I or any other rainbow person should make ourselves small for the benefit of people who are going to complain anyway. And screw you for selling out trans kids and screw you for trying to frame yourself as a virtuous person while twisting a knife into our lower backs. And pulling up. Seriously. Mm -hmm. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah. You can't be doing that. I'm just... <sighs> yeah, it's, it's all just... 
exasperating. Why does she want to do? Mm -hmm. Why she, even? Uh, she's a Pino, progressive in name only. But you, you see the thing? Mm -hmm. It's it's very subtle ideology instead of learning. And then um, I'm not going to show it here. I guess, but when she says nobody's trampling, it didn't take me long to, to go into YouTube and to find lots of videos of transgender teens being beaten at the park or on the schoolyard or whatnot. And there was just recently a case in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. I think literally on the day that she posted that, the day before that, there was a trans person named Raven who basically had her head stomped, literally being trampled. Mm -hmm. Quote, those are the priorities the school should focus on. Really? The priorities. <laughs> now, now remember again, right? Schools are for education. Kids are not learning basic skills and violence is off the charts. So education, learning basic skills like this. And for some reason, she just threw that there's violence in the, the chart. Anyway. <laughs> so, do you realize, given the context, you've just said that it's not a priority for schools to focus on creating a safe, loving, welcoming, positive environment for all kids? Is that really what mm -hmm. you're going with? Curriculum should also be age appropriate. This is Canada. We've been a nation for 150 plus years. We had education systems all this time in which curriculum was not a... You're, you're going to tell me now that we had an education system all this time in which curriculum was not age appropriate and we just realized it this summer? Again, that's what you're going with. All the teachers, all the principals, all the students that were exposed to all this pornography, all were all in the conspiracy together to keep it quiet until, until just this summer. And speaking of age-appropriate curriculum, you're claiming that a curriculum from coast to coast to coast today was not developed with the help of the finest pedagogues, those most likely to know what is age-appropriate curriculum available to us up until just this summer. We just realized that we have not been doing that. That's what you're wondering with. And speaking of age-appropriate, what age, and please be specific, is too young to be appropriate to start learning that not all families and not all people are the same, and that you should treat them with respect, even if they're different. What age is appropriate to start learning that? Because I, I don't know how it. old you are, Tasha, but uh, from the comments that you've written over the past few days, you haven't reached that age yet. Clearly. Unimpressed face. You are better than this, and I do not understand why it is that conservative-leaning women repeatedly agree to play dumb in public for the benefit of some men. Stop it. Yeah. It's not a good look. Well, let's just look at this. From the breakdown, our friend Nate. Why does condemning the hate marches matter so much? Because the day after they happened, kids in Kitchener lit a pride flag on fire, then threw it and rocks at LGBTQ2S plus kids. And I know they did not learn that in school. You can bet they didn't learn that from any curriculum. And here's the link. I'll put it in the chat. There for you go. anybody who wants to read it, I have it right here. This is the link to the uh, the article. Yep. And I'll post your link as well. Yep. And uh, I said, uh, I put um, uh, this, this story there, a link to the story about uh, uh, the young girl, trans girl who was mm -hmm. uh, beaten. Um, the parents, uh, some of the parents are not happy because... Um, um, Cape Breton parents have called for a town hall after the student was attacked, and it seems that um, the school just wanted to make it all go away. Of course, uh, some of the parents are not having that. So, all right, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? 
We do indeed, sir. Um, I want to I wanna just end it on, because it's been a really heavy, heavy morning. Uh, Tuesday is, uh, you know, traditionally a lighter day than Monday. We flipped it. We flipped the script this week. So I'm going to end it with uh, Theo and Madakis's latest cartoon. Um, I think you'll like this. I'm going to put it on the screen and then I'll read it to you and describe it for those listening. I was wrong and I'm sorry, Belt Scandal. It is a picture of Doug Ford painting himself into the corner in green with several cans of paint and paint rollers and a brush and green belt scandal written on the floor. I was wrong and I'm sorry after he painted himself into a corner. Yeah, Doug, <clears throat> again, if you were wrong, if you actually do believe you were wrong, mm -hmm. honestly, that's not a lie. Mm. And you actually are sorry. Mm -hmm. And the buck stops with you, I believe you said previously. Mm -hmm. Consequences. Choose them for yourself or they will be chosen for you. If you're still sitting there, if you made an 8.3 at the time, now valued at $25 billion mistake that would result in the transfer of public goods and you're standing there saying, well, no money changed hands. It doesn't matter if money changed hands. You carved off some of our institutional intergenerational wealth and decided to carve off a slice off the leg and carve it up and serve it to your buddies. I don't care what form the legal tender is in, cash, credit, American Express, like, you know, Tina Turner and Private Dancer, and Dutch Marks or Dallas, mm. American Express will do nicely. Thank you. You stole from us. Mm -hmm. You tried to steal from us. That must come with a consequence other than, oh, I'm sorry, and I won't do it again. I promise, promise, super double pinky swear with maple syrup on it this time. Friends, have you tried the new Timmy's sandwich? I have a smile cookie. Yeah. <clears throat> you need to resign, buddy. Or your apology means nothing. All right, kids. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Ah, yes. <laughs> and eat your Honey Nut Cheerios, says Cassie Lake. Please support your folk of farmers and Mateo and eat your Honey Nut Cheerios. Absolutely. Very, very good. I had them before I started the show. Um, because sharing is caring, please let your kits and cubs know. Uh, kits and cubs, let your peeps and poops know about us. The kits and cubs already do because they're the in crowd. They're the cool people. Um, by telling them about our show. And um, if you would like to subscribe, well, then you go to our pod page site sponsored by the Ray Girl. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, you will not miss it. And uh, since you're subscribing, make like Kit Elaine and uh, smash with all of our buttons. My buttons are our are, are buttons can set to be smashed with like, subscribe, share. Hey, why not? The gang's all here. Click them. All right. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, love what we do and would like to encourage us to do more, that's quickly by Mr. Grizzly's head here, uh, brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee, K O hyphen F I dot com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And that will bring you to uh, the Beaver Lodge's emergency hydration fund. That's where you will find uh, your ability our tip chart where you can leave a contribution so that uh, we may be able to uh, staff ourselves up with uh, Guinness and hot chocolate and Caesar and uh, all those lovely things that keep our voices moist. There you go, Jen. An extended one for you today. That, that really creeped me out. It was a little creepy, wasn't it? It was really it was creepy. creepy. Yeah, I have to admit. Yeah, that, that one didn't probably come out right. <laughs> no, that creeped me out, dude. Must be a little more <laughs> mysteriously sexy. But see, that, that, that's why I tell you, I have no game. It's a good thing that uh, it's a good thing my beaver sweetie tapped me on the shoulder and asked if I wanted to dance because I'd probably still be single. Okay. Um, so, and maybe even if still a virgin. Who knows? Um, <laughs> no. No, you told us that Randy was, fixed yes, that for yes, you. I was not a virgin when I met my sweetie. I, I, I will not, I will not lie to you, kids. 
Okay. <laughs> only the facts. Only the facts. <laughs> All right. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager Beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. So uh, please be kind to and uh, gentle with yourself. Also, because democracy is something that you do. Um, remember, make sure that you're ready to vote uh, in uh, Manitoba. And if you live in the Quebec City area in the, the electoral district of Jean Talon uh, for uh, provincial politics, uh, you guys have a by election going on and uh, early voting started yesterday. So I uh, Get your votes in. All right. Rendez-vous aux urnes. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some uh, words <clears throat> of wisdom, please? I don't know if it's words of wisdom or it's just an observation. Um, I'm going to put something on the screen here and then I'll make a quick comment about it. Uh, it's an interesting photograph with some Photoshop taking place, but it's what's written above the photograph that I find truly compelling. Doctor says in 10 years time, humans will be able to live and work till the age of 120. Um, so let's see, that means I have another 70 years to work. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. 75, I guess. No, no, I, I, I don't wish to do that. I don't wish to work, uh, live and work till 120. Uh, I was hoping that I could retire in 20 years at the age of 75, which is usually 10 years prior to when many people retire, but uh, I have no choice. So work hard, save your money, uh, don't run up your credit cards if you can avoid it, and uh, have a great day. That's all I got. All right, Mr. Grizzly, please roll them credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, Hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We have a Miss Sedeka says, my older kids get a kick out of Paul's passion rants and Douglas's facial expressions at the same time. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, I kind of went off today. Yes. And apologies uh, if anybody was offended, but you know. And the, the latest in Mateo news, apparently it was not Honey Nut Cheerios this morning, but Quaker Oats, Peaches, and Cream, which is the best flavor. Oh, I love the like, peaches and cream. Totally. Oatmeal. You've got good taste, mm. sir. I think Mr. Mateo might become our style guru. Just saying. He's Good on happen. trend. He's Good on happen. trend. All right, kids. All right. Have a great day. See ya.